this video, we're going to take a look at the process of using Substance Materials in Amazon Engine. As you will see, the process is pretty straightforward. So we're going to start with just adding a substance to our project. So here at the top of the UI, we have the Substance button. So this opens the Substance Editor dialog. So I'm just going to left click this button and here in the Substance Editor, I can import new Substance Materials into my project. Now, before we can use the editor to import a substance, we need to have copied this substance file into our project directory. So here I'm just going to drag over a Windows Explorer window, and here I have this RPG sample project. And I have a materials folder, so I'll just double click to go into this folder. And here I've also created a substance directory. So here in this substance directory, you can see that I've added in these SBS AR files. These are the substance materials. So if you're using Substance Designer, you can publish your substances directly to your project directory, or you can just simply copy and paste them over. So once we've added these substances here to our project directory, we can then go through the process of importing them into our project. So it's very simple. I just come over here to File, and I can just import Substance. And I'll just navigate to the directory, so Materials, Substance, and then I'll choose the substance that I want to work with. So here I would just select and click Open. Now I've actually imported in a few substances already and you can see that it creates this materials folder. So I'll click this drop down arrow and then I have substances so you can see that it's using the directory scheme that I had set in my project. And here are the substances that I have. So once you find a substance that you want to work with, all you need to do is just select the substance and then here you have all of the parameters that you set inside a substance designer. Over here on the far right side, you can see the texture outputs. So for instance, if I want to have the Substance Engine generate this ambient occlusion, I can do so by just clicking this box here to create the texture output. We have the Substance parameters that I had created in my Substance using Substance Designer. So here I have the ability to change the resolution of this Substance, as well as make changes here to the Substance. Once we make a change, the substance will regenerate the textures. The textures are going to get saved as a dot subfile. Let's take a look at that now. So let me just open up the Window Explorer again. So here is the substance that we're working with, and here you can see that it generates these subfiles. These are the actual textures as generated by the Substance Engine, and are the textures that are applied into the material within Amazon Engine. Now, once you've changed the parameters and you've set up the substance the way you want, you'll want to come over here to File and save that substance. You can also delete the substance as well as export textures. So let's say that uh, you use your parameters to generate a certain set of textures and you want to save these textures to a file format that can be used in other applications, you can just hit File and export these textures. Now that we've configured the substance, we can apply it to an asset here in our level as a material. So now I'm going to open the material editor. So we'll click this button here. And within the material editor, you can see that we also have our document structure from our project. So here we have the materials and that substance folder. So I'll click this drop down and you can see that here are the substances that we have to work with. Here within the texture maps, the substance subfiles have been added to the appropriate channels. So for instance, I have my diffuse texture is placed in the diffuse channel, my normal, and the normal, and so on. So all I have to do is just take this material and simply assign it to a selected asset here in the level. So I have the asset selected, I'll simply right click and assign to selected objects. So now the substance material has been set here on this asset. Now once the substance material is applied, I can easily go back to the substance and I can make changes to the parameters and the substance will update in real time. Now we're going to take a look at how you can configure your substance so that it will work correctly within Amazon Engine. Different PBR workflows are going to have different implementations. So for instance, with this substance material that I'm working with, I'm utilizing the PBR Metal Rough workflow. So if I come over here to the top and I look at my material and I take a look at the definition, you can see that I'm using physically metal rough. We also have the ability to work with spec gloss, but just in my case, I was working here with metal rough. Now, the way that the Amazon engine works with this material, I need to set up the texture outputs in a different implementation so that when the substance textures are generated, they will work correctly with the Amazon engine material. Amazon Engine uses a variation of the PBR specular glossiness. 
where the glossiness map is actually placed in the alpha of the normal. It's very easy to set this up here in Substance Designer, so let's go through the process of seeing how I can convert a metal rough material to work with Amazon Engine. So here under my PBR utilities, I'm going to grab this conversion node. What this will do is it will convert from PBR metal rough to a different target. So here under the target dropdown, you can see that I have a couple different rendering implementations. So what I'm going to do is just leave this at the default of PBR diffuse spec gloss. So I'm going to take my material and just plug this in. So with this node selected, I'll hit one on the keyboard to expose the channels. And you can see that it's converted my base color to diffuse, my specular. So now I have this specular value. And I'll just double click the glossiness. And here you can see my glossiness map, which is just simply an invert of my roughness map. So now that I have these outputs, I'm going to come over here to my output nodes. And I've already set the identifier for this node. It used to be base color, but I've changed this to diffuse. This is so the Substance Engine will know how to generate the textures correctly. So I'm going to take my diffuse and just simply connect this here. The normal map, we need to do a little bit of extra work to this. So let's just worry about this here in just a little bit. Um, I need to add a new output. So here I'll hit spacebar, and I'm going to search for an output node. And here's the output node. And that creates this texture output node here in our graph. And for our usage, let's click this Add Item button. And then we'll click this drop down box here and we'll choose specular. So let me just find specular. Here it is. And now we have the usage set to specular. You can also change the identifier name as well. And I'll just do that. So we'll just call this specular. So now let's take our specular and let's just plug this guy into here. So we've taken care of our diffuse and our specular. Let's see what else we have. Uh, our roughness, we don't actually need this. So I'm just going to delete uh, that output. Uh, my ambient occlusion, I don't need that anymore, so I'm just going to delete that as well. And my height, I am going to uh, utilize my height output so that I can use some parallax mapping within Amazon Engine. So now that we have that in place, uh, here we also have our glossiness. So like I said before, we need to be able to take that glossiness and place it in the alpha of this normal map. And like I said, we can do that very easily here inside of Substance Designer. So here I'm just going to hit my spacebar again so that I can search through my nodes. And I'm going to start to type in RGB. And here you can see that we have this node here, RGB-A merge. And this is what we're going to use. So I'll just left click to create this node. And you can see that the input, it takes in RGB and an alpha. And it's going to merge that into a single output. So that's all that we're going to need to do. So let me just come over here to my normal. And let's plug this into the RGB input. And let me grab hold of the glossiness, and we'll plug this into the alpha. And so now we've placed the glossiness into the alpha of the normal, just like we need for Amazon Engine. So we'll take this output, and we'll just feed this here into the normal output. So now that we have this in place, we've set up the texture outputs that we need to create the material that we need for Amazon Engine. So here, I would just come up to my actual substance and just publish this into my project directory, and then import that substance as we, as we have already covered. So here we are back in Amazon Engine. And again, just wanted to point out that the texture maps, the .sub files, are the textures that are generated by the Substance Engine. And they are automatically placed into the appropriate texture input slots. So we have diffuse. Here's our normal. Remember, our normal has the glossiness embedded in the alpha. We have our specular. And then here we have our height texture. So if I come down here to shader generation parameters, I have parallax occlusion mapping enabled. And that's going to utilize this height map to create a little bit of extra depth and detail into uh, the rendering of the material. And it's going to utilize POM displacement and setting and self-shadowing strength that I can utilize to create that effect. So that's how you use a substance material. Uh, there's another aspect of texturing with substance tools that I want to talk about. And so here, I'm just going to zoom in uh, to uh, this asset here, this vehicle asset that we have. Um, this vehicle asset was actually created using Substance Painter. And so this is just using standard textures. And so now I would like to show you how you can use Substance Painter to create textures for use in Amazon Engine as well. So here we have this vehicle asset, and I've textured that here in Substance Painter. In this particular case, I've used the Metal Rough PBR workflow. And so now I want to export this for Amazon Engine. I can just right click and go to my export textures. And then here in my configuration, I want to bring to your attention that we have this Amazon preset. 
And so this is the textures that we're going to create. Notice that we have our diffuse, our spec, and then here we have this normal with the glossiness set in the alpha. So if we take a look here, we have the normal as converted as a direct X normal, which is here in our converted maps section. And then here in the alpha, you can see that we have the glossiness grayscale. So all we need to do is just export these textures to our project directory. And then we can just import these textures into Amazon Engine and apply them to a material just as you normally would. This allows you to work with Substance Painter to create physically based assets and content for use in Amazon Engine very quickly and easily.